that we have one more here. Okay, so we are about to start. Welcome uh, to the dev room, uh, dev room, <laughs> dev room of Postgres. Sorry, my dev room, you are welcome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so our next speaker comes almost every year to Postdem, all the way from a very far away from the country, you will figure out from his name. He not only comes to Belgium in Postdem time, but he also comes during the Postgres conference in Belgium, which is in May, because he loves cycling and he loves beer, which is something very <laughs> difficult from Belgium. That's why he's, he comes here. He's going to talk about his expertise and postures anyway. And if you have very good questions, people are giving up, up to 10 euros for this ball. But if you're giving a good question for Ilya, you can get this uh, for free now after you ask your question. Okay? So please welcome Ilya Kosmodimiaski. Thank you, Boris. <laughs> so it's, it's very neat from Boris not to give the stress ball before the talk. And it's <laughs> only after the question that I have a chance to leave. Uh, so. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ilya. Maybe if you've been for Fosden before, you saw me already. Uh, I'm working for DataGrid. We're doing some PostgreSQL services. Uh, I try to, to do PostgreSQL services as well, but regret to say I do more Excel nowadays. But still, <laughs> um, we have some experience in uh, upgrading PostgreSQL installations, and I would share some information we have uh, to you. So, uh, just to figure out, who already runs PostgreSQL 12? Oh, maybe someone runs 13? Uh, the right? Cheater. <laughs> <laughs> That's why nobody runs 13 yet. <laughs> uh, so, uh, 10? Uh, 9.6? 9.5? 9 9.4? 9 uh, you need to upgrade probably <laughs> several days already. Uh, seven. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. J j just to figure out uh, how many people need actually to upgrade and uh, on what version specific things I need to concentrate. Uh, anyway, so uh, why I prepare on this talk? Uh, because upgrading your PostgreSQL is not a rocket science. It's actually quite easy job to do. But all this, uh, there are some. Uh, small details which are actually completely, uh, which could completely ruin all your process. So basically, if you take a look on the documentation of how to upgrade Postgres using PG upgrade, it's simple, pretty much straightforward. But if you have really heavy loaded database and you are not concentrated on some small details, uh, you can ruin your database. And uh, this is actually um, a key problem for upgrades. So um, you can get downtime which you don't want you can ruin your database you can ruin your data which is not the same thing than ruining database it's even worse because if you don't have a backup for example it could be a big problem uh, and you need to know your system not only your database but uh, for example how your application works uh, from which host it goes uh, which uh, features of database it uses and so on so um, Besides of that, long preparation time, long planning time, maybe a night shift. Uh, and because of this, uh, most DBAs do not like upgrades. I don't know, who consider himself as DBA? Uh, okay, <laughs> who likes to upgrade databases? Okay, M me too, because, you know, I'm that person who normally works with Excel, so then I have a chance to look in Postgres, I'm really happy. Uh, so, um, uh, but most of the DBAs are actually scaring of uh, upgrades, uh, and uh, they are attached to outdated versions. Uh, and uh, this is like sort of catch-22. So you know uh, which sort of uh, surgeon is the best surgeon. Uh, that one which makes lots of uh, manual work, lots of operations. So basically, uh, the cardio surgeon is supposed to, to do his job like every day, and then he is fit enough to do the routine operations quite successfully. And that's the problem with uh, upgrades. If you are sticking to an old version, uh, maybe then it would be necessary to upgrade. 
you do not have required skill because you don't do not do upgrades quite frequently and that could be a problem you will ruin th those things because uh, you do it that rarely so any upgrade became a major uh, stress for you and that that's a bad thing uh, for your database you're trying to keep uh, safe and up and running uh, so my suggestion actually uh, I can understand if your production environment should work on certain version uh, more than one year. It's quite acceptable. Maybe you need sort of security audit, some other requirements, which um, cannot allow you to upgrade to like every year Then we have a new release of Postgres. Uh, but even if you do not upgrade your productive environment, just set up the stage, uh, put the same amount of data there and try to upgrade so basically if you see devrim uh, pushes a new package try to upgrade you will get that practice uh, in your fingers and that really uh, will help you uh, to um, do real upgrades successfully uh, why we need to upgrade obviously bug fixes security fixes things like this so basically uh, you can only be uh, safe if you are upgraded uh, because there are lots of issues uh, which are arising from time to time and we need to uh, fix them uh, recently i would say over the last five years at least maybe even like last 10 years uh, the tempo postgres takes is uh, incredibly uh, fast so people bring in new features that improves performance uh, quite drastically so uh, and now um, actually many software developers are much more agile than they used to be like in a bank 20 years ago so they want new features they, they want uh, new features of JSON they want new features of uh, something and uh, as a DBA you actually uh, supposed to help developers if you're a developer yourself or if you're a DevOps uh, you probably already know that uh, you need to bring new features fast so in Postgres world it's ne necessary to upgrade fast and that's part of the deal um, and when you're upgrading on time it makes it easier so if you run something seven something right now uh, I would say, like, uh, call me. So I cannot explain that in one um, talk or even in a new tutorial because for such upgrade which is not on time, you will need a lot of, uh, like, preparation, a lot of investigation, what we are supposed to do, it, and so on. So, like, then you upgrade, like, within this window, then you need to upgrade, like, in once a year, uh, once in two years, once in three years, it it would be quite okay. But upgrading from very old version, it's like complicated task. Uh, and well, uh, I personally appreciate if you run seven something or eight something because well, as consultants, we are happy to meet such customers. It's our favorite. Uh, so one big uh, corporation with uh, starting with letter O, uh, they just double the prices of the support for old versions. Uh, but well. As a community member, I always advise you to upgrade. So, um, in Postgres cohort, we have a uh, very specific term, uh, which calls um, major upgrades and minor upgrades. What is all about? Previously, uh, we used to have a very ridiculous version numbering. Uh, so, it was like 9.4 or point 0.3. So, we basically mm, ha used to have uh, two major uh, release numbers and one minor release numbers it was very confusing and that's why we moved to modern after 9.6 uh, system of numeration like 10 point something uh, and one is major one is minor uh, so uh, basically once a year uh, there is a major release which includes new features and uh, after that uh, because new features always uh, bring uh, not only fun uh, well, fun. It's still fun, uh, but uh, also lots of bugs because people rework on the backend. Um, so we need to fix them, and we have during a year lots of uh, minor um, uh, releases, and we need to perform minor upgrades. Uh, so the definition is: in major upgrades, there are new features; in minor, 
there are no new features. It's like uh, fixing old stuff. So it's uh, it's really important to distinguish that, uh, and because of that nature of major upgrades, uh, the methods of upgrading databases is different. Um, and it's, there is some sort rule of thumb. Uh, now we probably supposed to upgrade to version 12. Uh, why? So version 12 was like in the autumn, uh, and it was like 12.0, and uh, I generally do not recommend uh, to install any sort of uh, PostgreSQL in criti mission critical production which has no minor upgrades yet. Because those new features bring in lots of bugs. So generally I would say from version 8 I have some sort of uh, not very accurate statistics and I would say like it's a half a year after the release. So basically you can start if you really uh, if you upgrade first some staging then non-productive environment uh, after that you can try to start uh, um, upgrading your product uh, productive environment like version um, 12.2 to 12.3 it's usually like half a year from initial release but that's like uh, really some sort of catch-22 as well because we need to fix uh, the bugs and if nobody upgrades um, that is difficult but well there are people who upgrade just immediately because developers want new features so rule of thumb still works um, before any upgrade that's like a very important rule read carefully version specific release notes because sometimes uh, there are some specific uh, issues with upgrade procedure and they are always in the release notes. So basically take a look on that very carefully. Uh, like if you are a successful PostgreSQL DBA, uh, you will learn to learn even release notes in your uh, smartphone when you update in your application. So it's like uh, automatic uh, sanity check. Um, play with uh, upgrade methods you like like several times before you perform actual upgrade because something can go wrong and there could be lots of problems. Uh, talk to your development team. If they want this major version upgrade, if they have some different uh, issues, if they use uh, something outdated things which are mentioned in release notes. So basically a good idea is actually to sit with your, I don't know, architect who is responsible for application level and read the release notes carefully together just to to, to align of course nobody do this but uh, it, it's a good idea to do this <laughs> anyway um, and of course make a backup and check it by test recovery and it's it's in bold uh, and test recovery is most important part of this bullet because the only guarantee that you have a proper backup is that you checked recovery that it is recovers. Cross check, check some things like this, they do not have any guarantee. So basically test that you do not lose your data because upgrade could be a risky process. Minor upgrades are theoretically easy. You simply install new binaries, start new database on the new data directory. Um, so there are no new features, the binary format is the same, completely easy. Uh, still, uh, there are some issues. First issue is uh, when your data is supposed to be online, uh, you probably want to pause PG bounce or things like this, uh, and then you're stopping your database. It could stop like long time because you have lots of dirty pages and they need to be checkpointed uh, to the disk. Uh, and if you do not play enough with this upgrade method, you will run into problems because, for example, you're trying to stop, you have some technological window like uh, several seconds to restart your database, it takes longer, you became nervous, uh, something calls you and says our database is offline, things like this, then you try to stop database with minus M, you ruin your database, and well, it's it's bad practice, so don't do, do like this. Uh, issue checkpoint like several times, then start to stop database, uh, then it goes smoothly. So just uh, prepare, play with all these combinations, uh, not to ruin actually very easy procedure compared to another one. And another thing, 
keep an eye of uh, upgrading all the related packages. So, um, mm, yeah, of course, and of course, do uh, backup a check recovery, uh, as, as you do. It's like uh, default point everywhere. So check all the packages which could contain something considered on Postgres. Because if you do not upgrade PostgreSQL uh, client, that's, that's OK, probably. You will get that warning. Uh, your software developers would get that warning. You will upgrade them later. But if you use some sort of contrips, if you use some um, debug symbols, uh, things like this, uh, you should be aware that you upgraded everything. And especially things like PG Bouncer, uh, things like uh, application level libraries, uh, drivers, and so on. So basically, the good practice is to have everything of the same version, uh, because it could be issues. Uh, major upgrade methods are much more complicated because uh, internal structures could be uh, quite different. Uh, so for that purpose, we have several methods, and we can choose which method is less dangerous. Uh, good old dump restore, PG upgrade, and some replication-based methods. That's the set we, we have, and we can try to do this. Uh, PG dump is a good way to upgrade your PostgreSQL instance, uh, if you can afford this. Because if you have a large database, uh, if this database is heavy loaded, it could be really tricky to upgrade with uh, PG dump. But if you can afford this, if you have like a couple of hundreds gigabytes of data, uh, it's not really heavy loaded, uh, it could be good. You are on the safe side because it's simple method. You can do that quickly and you will be happy. Um, it's a frequent question actually uh, how I should upgrade uh, my database if I run Postgres inside Docker. Uh, well, uh, most of the things I'm talking about here are for just normal server, not a container. Because usually if you run database in container, it's like if it's small database for some microservice for some team which showed up and doing some research or things like this, it's a small database uh, inside the container. Uh, you have the data on outside disk. Uh, it's not big enough. It's not heavy loaded uh, because uh, usually if it's like this, you run into problems before you're thinking of upgrade. So it basically would be much more earlier. Uh, so PG dump is good way to do upgrade with uh, Docker. Uh, there is some project of running PG upgrade inside Docker. I think it's called uh, PG, Docker PG upgrade. Uh, it basically runs PG upgrade inside the container. Uh, I tried to play with that. Uh, I do not claim I saw that in production, uh, but then I played that on my computer, actually, I run into problems several times. So basically, it's, I would not advise to do this. So try to keep PG dump. Um, problem is, uh, if you have requirements on downtime, that could be tricky to, to do this. Uh, another problem is uh, disk space can be quite expensive. And for PG upgrade using dump restore, most likely you need uh, extra disk space or you need work with some tricky procedure uh, which can ruin your data. Uh, good thing, it works with any Postgres core version since 9.7, but there could be some issues. But theoretically, you can upgrade even from very old uh, versions because it has nothing to do with bi binary format. It has only uh, to do with your schema, uh, with um, logical structure. So it's not like uh, data files. So nothing changed there. But for example, if you have really old database on old version and you use intensively storage procedures, uh, something was changing during that uh, time, and you need actually check compatibility of your server logic in this case. And that could be tricky, actually. Uh, PG dump has option of custom format. Uh, you can compress this, uh, and it's proper way to, to do the PG dump, uh, and it can save you uh, some uh, some disk space. Actually, PG dump can uh, do several jobs, so it can do things in parallel. Uh, and in some cases, you just need to experiment with this. It could be good for you because it would be easier and faster. Uh, but mm, 
the problem is uh, if you do tricky things like PG dump uh, from this port and uh, in pipe you restore to another port to save uh, uh, some, some time to do that faster. I do not recommend to do this. Don't do it at home, but you can try. Uh, you can not do this using uh, multiple jobs, so uh, just figure out what you need actually uh, and try uh, with jobs or without. Uh, and uh, if your installation can be upgraded like this, that's good. <laughs> Congratulations, that's, uh, that's not tricky uh, anymore. Uh, and that was probably, you will be happy about this. Uh, a small uh, notice which actually would be uh, quite useful for us uh, on the future slides as well. Don't forget about uh, locales. So basically, especially if you are not only using uh, English, if you're using French, uh, German, Russian, uh, Dutch, uh, something which requires spe specific locale, um, you can be actually run into problem if uh, you initialize your new database in different locale or just forget to initialize and using default locale. Uh, everything goes okay normally. So you can dump, restore, and at some point you will figure out that uh, sorts uh, doesn't, do, do not work properly, things like this. You can spend lots of time on troubleshooting those things. So uh, put on your checklist actually that you need to double check uh, the locale and it's supposed to be exactly the same. Uh, major upgrade using PGDAM, the procedure is quite easy. You install new binaries, install new cluster, don't forget about locale, change config files appropriately. That could be a problem, just like with uh, failover and switchover. Uh, don't forget that you need a pghba.conf same like uh, on your old database because after that you will let application work with the database and it doesn't work. That's the common problem. So uh, keep an eye on that, synchronize those things. Uh, that could be a very good idea to use the newer version PG dump, but uh, if you upgrading from really old version, there could be issues with really old things. Uh, and uh, again, read release notes, use the newer one. If you're working with something very old, uh, just test that 10 times. Uh, then restore your dump and try to figure out if everything is okay. Test it, see if application works, uh, nothing strange, and so on. Then switch your application to the new cluster. And usually, because we run into such problems many times, uh, do not delete your old cluster immediately. Even if uh, there is n not quite much disk space, keep it for some time <laughs> because something can go wrong and could be a problem. PG upgrade for major upgrades. I would say that's a major method we use uh, and it's tricky, but actually it's most useful one. Procedure is uh, simple as well. <coughs> uh, but um, to figure out how to do this, we need to figure out how it works. And based on that, we need to choose uh, the way how we upgrade. It would be slightly different for just send on server, uh, for um, primary hot standby configuration, uh, and uh, for some tricky situations, then you really, really uh, have very small technological window uh, to perform the upgrade. Then you could not allow your downtime. And of course, details, details. Uh, so PG upgrade is a very smart idea. You have um, old and new database cluster, uh, and there is a mechanism which actually takes the old binary files and uh, detach them from the old cluster somehow, uh, and then um, moves all the information Postgres needs for normal work, like uh, you know, transaction ID counter, uh, like PG catalog, uh, stat uh, statistics is a tricky thing, uh, and moves that to uh, the new thing. And then uh, you take the user data and add that uh, to a new database and it works like this. So theoretically, 
the basic idea is very simple. And well, Bruce Momsen wrote this tool like many years ago, and since that time it's, it's online, it works. But there are tricks. So the idea is first we decouple PGC log uh, and uh, uh, from new cluster, couple old PGC log to a new cluster, and set the proper seed. Uh, to, which allows us actually to, to run database from the same point, uh, from the same transaction. Uh, when, uh, then we restore the schema, uh, all the things we need to operate with our database normally. And then we did that. If the data files with user data would be the same, everything's supposed to be the same because we, we have the same schema, we have the same transaction uh, visibility map, and things like this. So we basically copy them, link them, or clone them to new cluster, and it looks like the old one. Uh, it sounds like slightly tricky, and it is. So procedure is like this. You create empty database uh, for new version of PostgreSQL. Don't forget about locale, things like this. Uh, stop database with uh, old PostgreSQL version. Of course, you need, uh, if you can, prevent application to connect because it can ruin things. Uh, we need afford some sort of downtime. If you're using PG uh, Bouncer, you can uh, put PG Bouncer on pause, and those uh, connections from the application will wait. Uh, so uh, theoretically, it will minimize downtime again. Uh, then you uh, start upgrade procedure with pg upgrade command. It's like mm, there is a documentation. It's quite obvious uh, in this case. Uh, then you after it successfully finishes, you uh, start database uh, on a new version. Then you start to collect statistics because um, during this procedure, statistics uh, is the uh, new. So PostgreSQL do not bring old statistics to a new cluster. PG upgrade doesn't do this. Uh, and you need to recollect the new statistics because if statistic is different, uh, plans would be different. If it's heavy loaded database, it could be an issue. Uh, then the statistic collection started. At some point, uh, you can open your database for new connections. Of course, if you do not have uh, really uh, high transaction rate, you can do that immediately and collect statistics. But if you have really mm, lots of transactions, most likely you start um, collecting statistics. Then it says you uh, like 10% of your statistics is collected. Uh, then you can open database and database proceed to collect statistics, but already some plans would be quite OK. This process is tricky, so then you do this. Uh, Keep an eye that there are not a lot of uh, logs, um, and based on that, probably uh, let database to collect statistics slightly longer. Mm, after several upgrades, you will figure out that uh, you need, for example, a slightly longer technological window. So basically, it's like uh, it's thing which comes with experience. Um, minimizing downtime. PG Bouncer has a very good feature, pause resume. Again, uh, your intention is to pause PG Bouncer, and then it is paused, quickly restart the database, and it's like, uh, it's a tricky thing, so it's basically like, uh, um, uh, many things could go wrong. Uh, issue the checkpoint to let your server actually stop quicker. Uh, and then you can uh, use minus K link, uh, to do the PG upgrade like very fast. So basically, PG upgrade has two major regimes. It can copy files, and that is tricky because it's like PG dump, you need extra time to copy things from one location to another one. And it has a problem that uh, you need, uh, again, um, double uh, disk space. So that's, that's why uh, for heavy loaded database, we use this ruling thing, and that makes uh, PG upgrade extremely dangerous because if ruling uh, doesn't work, you can lose your data. Uh, so uh, always think twice. If uh, your database is not big enough, and you, if you can afford like a minute more of downtime, most likely you can move the things with copying. If you can afford this, do this. Uh, use relink only if you have very, very strong 
requirements on downtime. Because uh, it's much better to uh, have a downtime of several minutes than a couple of hours to store from backup, uh, things like this. But it's everything depends on planning. So uh, common question is what to upgrade first, a hot standby or primary or whatever. Uh, my suggestion is actually first you upgrade uh, primary as it is a standalone server. So just upgrade it, leave your replicas alone. If something goes wrong, for example, with relinking things, you can uh, just promote the replica, brief, and repeat the process from the beginning. So basically, uh, you will be on a safe side because switching to the replica, it's a smooth process. You most likely do that frequently, so you can do this. Uh, don't try to upgrade everything simultaneously. Most likely, that never ends well. Uh, then um, you see that everything is upgraded. It, it works. It looks like your database, not like some Frankenstein-style thing. Uh, just reinstantate your replica one by one again, and you will have your replicas, your cluster, like it is upgraded. Um, so you pause PG Balancer on, uh, on standby, clone replica from upgraded primary using PG Base backup. Actually, documentation probably still says uh, use rsync. I never advise to use rsync because even experienced people uh, do make mistakes, then they do backup scripts manually. PG Backup is a good tool, use it. Uh, or using PG Backrest, whatever you prefer. Uh, and then resume PG Balancer, start connections, uh, or start PG Balancer, allow your application to go in. So that's pr procedure is like this. Now come details, <laughs> which can ruin everything. Uh, there is no optimizer statistics. So there is uh, a script, which is not a part of uh, PG Upgrade. So basically, PG upgrade generates a script which you need to run manually. Uh, double check documentation about this. So basically, you need to be prepared to such things. Basically, it does vacuum db minus minus all uh, minus analyze and stages. Analyze and stages. It, this is uh, what I told you. So it just uh, starts to analyze in parts doesn't try to make all the analyze for entire database, which can be actually quite difficult uh, if you have heavy workload. Uh, since 9.5, you can run vacuum DB in parallel, and which can be extremely good if you have a large database. So don't hesitate to open this script, read what it is in it, and maybe edit it something uh, along to your requirements, so you can use different things. Um, and uh, we actually basically just running Wacom DB minus minus all manually, uh, just not using the, uh, that script. We have some sort of our own. Uh, and again, keep an eye on logs. Maybe you need to stop the script because it's relatively safe. It's just statistics. And block users from connecting or maybe block only some users uh, which are issuing heavy updates or things like this. Then rerun statistics. So uh, be creative, uh, experiment on stage, uh, not uh, on the production, and you will be on a safe side in this regard. Um, documentation suggests to use rsync. I would say use PG Base backup. Uh, so there are lots of possibilities to shoot your leg, and maybe not only the leg. Uh, some distributions like Debian Ubuntu uh, have, of course, wrappers which allow you to do uh, things like semi-automatically. Uh, never ever do that for mission-critical database. Uh, I like Debian, I like Ubuntu, they're nice uh, people with beautiful products, so with very good uh, approach, good attitude to build in the distributions. But the problem is all those wrappers uh, increase numbers of bugs you can hit, and uh, PG upgrade is complex enough so don't do it. Try to do that as manually as you can. Like with a backup, uh, it should be simple as possible. Uh, so manually. Uh, extensions, it's important thing. Extensions is a beautiful mechanism, but slightly uh, 
work in progress. So some uh, aspects of extensions are not quite good. And one of the problem is the ultra extension support is supposed to uh, take care of upgrading scripts. You can never ever know if uh, that job was done properly. And if it was done on time, then you decide to upgrade to this version. Yeah, is this extension up to date or not? Most likely, if it is extension which ships together with Postgres, it is, because people do check those things. But for third party extensions, that's not true sometimes. So PG upgrade keeps old versions of extensions, which could be a problem because it uh, will not work with your new database. Uh, so normally, the default prerequisite is to run cycle for all extension and perform alta extension name update. So just uh, at the point then you're experimenting on your test database, do that, take a look what is going on there. If you have some warnings, things like this, if something doesn't work, go for it, do it. Uh, some extensions are unknown to, uh, to require the special care. For example, PostJS should be updated before an upgrade, actually. So basically, after that, it would be like tricky things. But once again, uh, don't believe me uh, and just take a photo of this slide and work on this. Every upgrade, you need to go through release notes. Uh, keep in mind which sort of extensions you have. Uh, and uh, actually manually uh, scrutinize what things you're supposed to, uh, to do to, in order to upgrade. Um, there are lots of improvements in uh, PG upgrades recently. So basically, I would say that PG upgrades uh, are getting better, faster. Uh, now, for example, uh, cloning is supported for newer versions of Linux kernel. It's safer than uh, old thing with relinking uh, and well uh, it's good thing uh, but be careful uh, you need a proper file system uh, and uh, well some people actually trying to perform PG upgrade with cloning or uh, relinking having um, database and write ahead logs for example on different file systems it never ends well so basically uh, check twice uh, I probably on every slide I can repeat this check twice and see if it works <laughs> using replication method to upgrade Postgres call I would say that it's not uh, the thing I would advise you but you can try uh, the problem is that uh, in spite of all the problems with PG upgrade this thing promising you zero downtime but you need to do lots of things manually. So it's very labor intensive. And uh, then it is so, you usually can like miss, miss, miss something, forget to move some table or things like this. But sometimes it's useful. The idea is set up new database cluster, set up replication, which one is preferred for you, and then just perform a follow-over. Because those types of replication uh, are working with different versions, mostly. Uh, mostly working with different versions of Postgres. Normal binary replication doesn't. So uh, logical replication is relatively new uh, promising method. Uh, and from 9.4, you can upgrade to a newer version using this. Uh, the problem is you need to uh, check documentation carefully for each release as you do, uh, and uh, then figure out how to manually actually uh, migrate your entire database. So basically, uh, logical replication is thing designed uh, for uh, like partial replication. So if you need to migrate entire thing, uh, it's lots of work for you. So just double check this. Um, there are some things which allows you to automate the process. And uh, check that you replicate uh, everything you need. So don't forget about sequences, things like this. Uh, and Mm, as well, uh, keep in mind that uh, on your upgraded database you need uh, users and roles and permissions and things like this. So this way of replicating data and upgrading data is more difficult. Use it only if you need really zero downtime. Uh, Sloney one, it's old, really, really old method and still compatible with Postgres, but uh, I would not uh, bet that it would be compatible for a long time. Uh, and you 
literally can migrate from, from really old versions of uh, PostgreSQL. Uh, failover could be done very fast. So basically, it's trigger-based, even on heavy load, it works. Uh, it's nightmare to operate that for a long time, but if you only need that for, for an upgrade, it could be a nice thing. But it's complicated, and if you're not quite experienced person in terms of Swanee, you know, like run twice, uh, read the documentation, everything is usual. But you need extra disk space, and it's trigger base. So if it's trigger base, uh, it could be really very CPU intensive, both on the old uh, server and new server. One dice, I never ever recommended actually <laughs> to use that, but some people prefer that to Sloney. Uh, Sloney is complicated nightmare. One dice is the same thing, but not that old and not that bulletproof. <laughs> so what can possibly go wrong? <laughs> but uh, the idea is like uh, it's not under that heavy development like Sloney used to be uh, before the binary replication and before logical replication. So it's like really buggy, and it was designed for different things like transferring data uh, partially. So I do not recommend to use it. <laughs> Conclusion. So that's some sort of a matrix uh, what we have. We have methods, uh, downtime, extra disk space, complexity, and risking. So PG upgrade with relink is low downtime, low disk space, complexity is high, and risking is very high. But still, if uh, you want to be on the safe side, use this one or use this one. If you have some special requirements, um, go for, I would say, logical replication if it doesn't work for you for some reason, for Sloney, but most likely logical replication because it's like a uh, new method uh, under heavy development. Uh, nobody can guarantee that Sloney would be uh, that good uh, like in five or three years. So that's like a conclusion. It's a good written list of y using some of those methods um, maybe uh, not very fresh one. So, for, for example, this br talk of Bruce is quite quite old, but he wrote PG upgrade, and uh, there are lots of good explanation how it works. Um, there are some blog posts, so enjoy. Uh, keep an eye on that, and uh, slides would be online, video would be online, so you can uh, return to this. And if you have questions, you can email them to me later or just ask them right now. Thank you. Well, thanks a lot, Ilya. We do have some time for questions, so if you want, okay. Yeah. Let, let's start there, Ilya. You have to mention migration. It's important to mention migration by flyways. Are you familiar with migration files by flyways, extracts, or things like extensions and not how? Uh, okay, okay, so the question is uh, how to do uh, smooth migrations then you upgrade your application. Am I correct? So uh, there are several tools for doing this, but uh, I would not say there is a civil bullet for this. So basically uh, some um, uh, ORAM frameworks, things like this, like Ruby Active Record, suggest to do those migrations from the application side. Uh, I would say many people who try to use that finally ending up with uh, like creating files on disk with alter commands and uh, just basically manually preparing that from uh, from s some some internal logic they use to to create uh, the application. So I would not say that some automatical tools are working good in this regard. Uh, if if you keep in track on everything in your database, for example, to perform the upgrade using uh, logical replication. Uh, that's basically like some script which goes through all the database, uh, keep track on all the tables, uh, and prepares uh, commands you need to install logical replication. I would actually suggest if you're interested in particularly in that part, ask Boris the things because he is much more experienced with logical replication working in the company which creates that. <laughs> that's like. Yeah, I address you to, to him. <laughs> okay, so you have a question here? Yeah. Uh, why don't you like to use PG restore piping to PG dump to do a little server? Yeah, well. Question. 
Why not? <laughs> ah, repeat, uh, wh wh why do not recommend to use uh, PG Restore uh, in a uh, PG Dump pipe PG Restore? Uh, well, you can do this, but it's not an easy thing. So basically, um, you can do this, but uh, something can go wrong. If you use different loca uh, different locale, things like this. Uh, but if you know what you're doing, welcome. Why not? We, we actually uh, used to do, I think, this piping from PG dump to PSQL before actually PG Restore was written. <laughs> so, it's, so it's really old practice. <laughs> but it makes sense migrating from one server to another. Yes, it makes sense. It's, it's, a, good, uh, it's a good question. Yeah. No, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a good question. Um, so the question was um, w how to estimate uh, downtime, uh, how long it takes to migrate uh, for, to upgrade from one server to another one. I would say that uh, one of the best estimation is like previous upgrades. <laughs> so if you know your database, you can figure it out. And even this doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, I, I would say that it's like some rule of thumbs uh, if you have um, some amount of data, if you are sure that you can actually disconnect some heavy up, up, uh, updates from your database, uh, you probably can guess something if you know your um, uh, database, how long does it take on those disks to copy things. Uh, from uh, one location to another. It's good if you have a test server which is like the same configuration or you can detach one of your replicas which is supposed to be the same configuration and just try to figure out copying files, how long does it take. So it, it is not like proper estimation but at least you will figure out that, uh, for example, okay, on such disks just copying the data files would, would be mm, too long and uh, you need to find another method, for example. But it's, it's like uh, experience thing. So basically, uh, that's why I suggest do upgrades recently. And try to, for example, take your production data if it's possible. Try to do without uh, any uh, heavy load an upgrade uh, and figure out how would it take on production. And basically, it's a good thing with upgrades because uh, most likely you need to close databases for for heavy changes. So it, it's much more easier than, for example, estimate performance on uh, detached replica or standby. So it's, it, it's a good, good news in this regard. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. So minor upgrade. What is the order? Do you first install the packages and then you restart Postgres? Yes. Or you stop Postgres, update the packages, and then start Postgres. Good question. I repeat, I repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't give him a ball. Uh, so what's uh, the order of, um, what's the sequence of our uh, things? So uh, by my minor upgrade, uh, do we install packages first, then stop Postgres, and uh, uh, then start Postgres, uh, uh, or we first stop Postgres, then install packages? Um, it depends on the distribution. <laughs> Uh, actually, but uh, I would uh, suggest if you can allow your downtime, be on a safe side. Stop Postgres, install new binaries, uh, then do the things. But in real world, we actually, every time we install new binaries, uh, trying to figure out that, for example, Debian do not start, do, do, do not spoil some things for us. Um, and after that, we actually do um, stop Postgres, move to new things, and so on. Uh, so if you have multiple instances, only the first one will start. The main one will just restart. The other one will just stay over there. But we will fix this problem in version 13. Yeah, well, uh, then uh, then you fix... Uh, yeah, so the, the, there was input from Devrim that RPMs also actually, rest, actually restart your database. Uh, then you try to do like I described. But m my point is actually that you should do those things more manually because, you know, RPMs, uh, as well as other packet managers, they allow you a lot of um, sort of automation things 
to make things for DBA simpler. But those automation is unpredictable. So basically, disable those things, try to do that manually. Then Devrim fix them. Then you will enjoy and include that on the slide that Devrim fix things. Go on, use automatic things. <laughs> Yes. So the question is, if you are using not PG based backup but using PG back rest, uh, is it applicable? Everything which I told, uh, or you need to make uh, PG back uh, PG based backup. Well, uh, what, what, what you uh, understand of immediate backup, actually? So uh, theoretically, the answer is yes, because you need your backup, and you cannot restore that uh, for a new version because it's binary and compatible. Uh, but I would not suggest you to make a backup immediately if you have heavy loaded database, which is uh, right now collecting the statistics. So there is some vulnerability period because if you will make a backup as well, it would be maybe too too heavy for your database. So wait like several minutes, then start to do this. But basically, you need to understand that if you upgrade it to new binaries, you do not have a backup anymore because all backups are backups from the previous version. You need to install previous version, then upgrade things like this. So as soon as you can, do the new binary backup or backup with PG backrest. Yeah, you can get me outside. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.